Yo, what is up guys? Stale Boy here. So Anthony Fowler defeats Harry Scarf by a 10 round unanimous decision. This fight was fairly uneventful and quite dull, to be completely honest. Anthony Fowler won this fight clearly. He won it without too much bother whatsoever, but he really didn't set the world alight doing it. Now, he did have a very negative fighter in front of him. Harry Scarf, in my opinion, didn't really come to fight. He was kind of moving excessively, switching stances, trying to fiddle his way through rounds, and it looked like he fought to survive, to be honest. So it is sometimes hard to look good against those type of fighters, it's got to be said. But you would have still liked Anthony Fowler to try and add an injection of pace, or change things up. He really didn't change things up in this fight. He was kind of following Harry Scarf around, you know, throwing the same combinations. And he looked fairly predictable at times. I would have liked to have seen Anthony Fowler cut the ring off more effectively. You know, like I said, he was following Harry Scarf in straight lines. Wasn't taking a, st uh, a step to his side to try and cut the ring off. He was just kind of following him around. And he'd never really had an injection of pace in his feet or his offence. So, it was very workmanlike from Anthony Fowler, but he got the job done, and he basically won every single round in this fight. Make no mistake about it, like I said, Harry Scarf really didn't come to fight. He was switching between Southpaw and Orthodox, flicking a really lazy jab out there, with no authority on it, and occasionally he would land counter punches as Anthony Fowler was coming in, mainly from the Orthodox stance. I felt that's when Harry Scarf had his best success, was in the Orthodox stance, when he was in the southpaw stance, Harry Scarf was getting caught with Anthony Fowler's overhand right. That was finding the target quite regularly for Fowler when Scarf was in the southpaw stance. And yet, in general, Harry Scarf's switching of stances really wasn't effective whatsoever. I felt he looked quite poor in the southpaw stance. Like I said, he was getting caught with more shots in that stance, again, especially with the right hand. So yeah... It was kind of the same thing round after round after round. Scarf spoiling, Scarf being negative, throwing a lazy jab, whereas Anthony Fowler was following him around the ring, landing some good body shots here and there, landing some good overhand rights. But that was really it. Anthony Fowler did drop Harry Scarf in round 9 with his best punch of the fight. Um, both guys were punching, and Anthony Fowler timed Harry Scarf with a lovely left hook as Harry Scarf was in the southpaw stance, again taking advantage of that low right hand, really good counter left hook by Anthony Fowler, that dropped Harry Scarf, and it did affect him, you know, he beat the count quite quickly, but then got back down to his knees because he was quite hurt, but fortunately for Harry Scarf, that knockdown was at the end of the round, and yeah, Harry Scarf then saw out the rest of the fight, which meant Anthony Fowler won a 10 round unanimous decision, routine win for Anthony Fowler. Going forwards, does this performance, you know, lead me to have any faith in Anthony Fowler in beating the top guys? No. I think if you've got a guy who is, you know, good from range with a good jab and some decent counter-punching ability, he's going to give Anthony Fowler a lot of problems. We saw that, obviously, in the Scott Fitzgerald fight. And, you know, when he meets a guy like that again, I still believe he will struggle because, like I said, his ability to cut the ring off isn't great. He comes in square on, comes in at straight lines, his guard is very wide apart, open for straight shots down the middle, and also uppercuts as well. You know, Fowler's a guy who comes forwards, doesn't really take his head off centre line, so he's open for all type of shots coming forwards, and an astute counter-puncher can take advantage of that. You know, I, I don't really see anything to indicate that Anthony Fowler is anything above a British level fighter, and there's nothing wrong with that, don't get me wrong, domestic level is still a really good level to get to, but given the amateur background he has had, you would expect a bit better, and I've not really seen the improvements from him as a pro, if I'm being honest. So, make of that what you will. Does Anthony Fowler need to change trainer? I've not, like I said, I've not seen the improvements under the Dave Coldwell, and, you know, that Scott Fitzgerald rematch will certainly be tough. You would imagine now Scott Fitzgerald has all the confidence in the world to do it again against Anthony Fowler. Going into that first fight, Fitzgerald was the underdog, but now he's beat him. You would imagine in the rematch, Fitzgerald is going to be even more confident. So, 
Anthony Fowler certainly has his work cut out against Fitzgerald in the rematch. Certainly a winnable fight, you know. As much as I like Scott Fitzgerald, he himself isn't exactly a world-level operator, right? So, you know, that, I think that's the fight to make. The, the rematch between Anthony Fowler and Scott Fitzgerald. There's a rivalry there. The first fight was fun. Why not make a second fight? I think that's the fight that makes most sense. But yeah, Anthony Fowler wins a unanimous decision against Harry Scarf. Share your thoughts below. Peace.